Hey YouTube, what's going on and welcome back to Cairo and his things. Today, we're going to be looking at the ultra small new release from Sofern, the SC13. Alright guys, let's get right into the specs on this SC13. For length, we're looking at 65 millimeters, and on diameter, we're looking at 29 millimeters. This is 40 grams without the battery. Now, I will show you some size comparisons here. So I've got three different 14500 lights I'm gonna show you. Here we have the Cyansky P12R. So this takes a 14500 or a double A. So when you look at the size here, check that out, the size difference we're looking at. This thing is tiny, all right? Let's pull out the Ace Beam Pokelet double A. Pretty common flashlights. So there's head to head. You can see the size difference still. And here is the new Workos TS10 version two, which we'll be doing a review on here shortly. Even the TS10, which is known to be a tiny flashlight, is still larger than this SC13. This does come with both a clip and a lanyard. So basically the way it works is if you put the clip on, it's a little bit different. So it actually goes in your pocket, head up or out of your pocket. And the purpose of that is because for those who want to use this uh, to put on your hat, you can still clip it on your hat and use it outward because they didn't put a uh, dual sided clip on it. So a single sided clip, that's the reasoning for putting it that direction. Now, personally, with the light being this small, I opted to just put a lanyard on there. I think it's a lot nicer to just throw this in my pocket. It's so tiny that it just buries in the bottom of my pocket, lift up in the lanyard, and I'm good to go. All right, if we go to the top of the light here, we have a Fresnel lens in there. So what that means is basically this allows the emitter to be super close to the lens while still providing really good results. So it doesn't need to be a deep reflector or anything like that you still get a really good beam profile off of this light with the emitter being super close to the lens here. And the purpose of that is to keep this light as small as possible. So inside there, we're looking at an SST40, which I think is completely fine on this light. It doesn't need to be a 519A. It doesn't need to be an LH351D. I think with the SST40 on this, we get a really good beam profile out of that Fresnel lens. So you're going to get something very similar to what the SC32 was. And I'll just show you guys. I didn't get green bending on mine. So I don't know if you will or not, but on mine, my bending turned out really good for my tent, so I'm very happy with that. For the switch, we're looking at a rubber button. As you can see, it just kind of protrudes out there, and when you click it in, it doesn't really recede into the body of the light or anything. It stays nice and firm, so it actually gives you a really good solid click. So good button. It doesn't exactly feel high quality because it's rubber, but it does its purpose and I like it. And you probably notice if I click it on, it does give us a battery indicator light. So for green, that means we're 70 to 100% battery. If you're at a constant red, you're between 30 to 70. And if you're at flashing red, you're under 30% battery. Now I will say that I really wish that they would have put this light on at all times, even when the light is off, because I have a hard time in the middle of the night finding this the button on this light. So when I pick it up, it's already so small, but because of the uh, way that the USB-C cover is built and the way that it feels. And then even with just the grooves in the side of the light here in the middle of the night, I'm just turning this thing, pressing, trying to find the button. I really wish that they would have uh, let this little indicator light stay on at all times so that I could find the button easily. They do do that on some of their other lights at Sofern. They chose not to on this one. Either way though, still a good button there. And then if we turn around to the back here, so this is USB-C recharging. Uh, I will say the flap is not my favorite. It's not a bad flap. It's just one of those where it, it's a little bit easier to rip up and then just trying to get it back in. Like, I don't know. It's just not smooth. I like a more discreet flap, a little tiny one. I would rather something like the flap that's on the SC32 than this, but still happy to see USB-C recharging on there. So as we move down the body of the light, as you can see here, we've got very, very fine knurling on the tube. So it doesn't feel aggressive in the slightest bit, not at all. It's actually very, very smooth. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that it really locks your fingers in place too much. It will a little bit, but what really does the trick is because from the head of the light to the tail of the light, the body actually, as you can see, kind of narrows in a bit. So I feel like that really helps lock your fingers in a lot better on that tight knurling. So I'm glad that they didn't just leave it as like one straight line, but that they let it recede in a bit. Okay. But yeah, so those, that knurling is very, very fine, not aggressive whatsoever. As we move towards the tail of the light, we are looking at a magnetic tail and it actually works pretty well. So here's a blade. And as you can see, works well. Now with a lot of manufacturers today, with a light this tiny, you're getting a battery that cannot be removed or that is proprietary, but this actually has a removable battery. So if we unscrew the tail here, we get an 18350 1100 milliamp battery. So you can actually take this out, recharge it separately, whatever, you know, you can replace the battery on this. So yes, they really did make an 18350 light this tiny, which 18350 is a small battery, don't get me wrong, but I don't know of any other 18350 lights that are this small. As far as performance, on turbo, we're gonna get 1300 lumens. Now, of course, like any other light nowadays, with turbo, it's just meant to be a short burst, but on high, we're looking at 500 lumens, and that's listed for one and a half hours. On medium, We've got 150 lumens. Now that's the uh, output that I think the majority of users are gonna use this on, and that's gonna last you for three and a half hours. On low, we've got 10 lumens for 17 and a half hours, so that's pretty good. And then on moonlight, which yes, this does have a moonlight at one lumen, we're looking at 100 hours. Lights these small, they've got to come with the moonlight mode. It's kind of crazy, because I saw Ace Beam's new uh, TAC AA, their AA, tactical style light and their ultra low mode I saw and it was five lumens that is way too bright for indoors in the middle of the night you've got to have a moonlight mode so thank you so fern for continuing to put that in your lights really happy to have that on there as far as user interface very very simple we're looking at click on click off okay hold from off to get to your moonlight which is pretty common and then hold from any output when you're on to swap between low, medium, high. If you want turbo, double click. If you want strobe, double click from turbo. You can go back into turbo from a double click, go back to regular mode from a single click, and off from a single click. So you're looking at the very, very basic, simple user interface that everybody knows how to use. If You can actually put a lock mode on this if you prefer as well. That's a triple click. So now if I try to, try to use the light, all it does is blank at me. If I triple click again, as you can see, I'm back out of it. And this light does have memory mode. So as you can see, I turned it off on low, turn back on low. Let's switch it up to high and turn it off. Back on, we're on high. So this does have memory mode as well. All right, now that we've covered the basic specs on this light, how about you follow me outdoors and we're gonna take a look at some beam shots.
right, now that we took a look at those beam shots, I've got to say, I love this little light. Man, is it impressive for the size. I love this sofa and is trying to get the lights as small as they possibly can while putting out the most performance that they possibly can. And I've got to say, you know, something like the Wubin X3, for example, is one of my favorite lights because of how many features it has. But yet, the Sofern SC13 has become one of my favorite lights because of how little features it has. And let me explain that for a second. There is just something about going back to the basics here where I know I can just pick this up, click it. It's such an easy user interface. It's so small. It works. It's got the magnet. It's got just a really good overall neutral beam profile, tint, everything. Everything is just so simple and solid. This is a light that everybody should have, especially if you're looking for one small light in your collection and you just want to keep it simple, if you're not somebody that's an enthusiast, if you don't need titanium or copper or any of those things, if you're just looking for a simple light to have in your collection that does its job and can be a little workhorse for you, this right here is the guy for you. I love this little light. Now, if it was significantly more expensive, we might be talking a little bit differently, but for the price, we're looking at only $28 on Amazon, and with that, it's normally running on sale to where you can get this closer to $20. I'll include a link in my description below, and also, if you wanna order directly from Sofern, yes, you're gonna have to wait longer to get it shipped from China than Amazon, but if you order directly from Am or from Sofern, you're going to be looking at about $18. So this light is very, very cheap. And I've got to say, I think it outperforms a lot of my AA lights. I'm going to give you guys some spoilers here of some of the upcoming videos we're about to release. We've got a review coming up on this Workos HD01, on the new version of the TS10, and on my brand new durable smartwatch. And I've got one other video coming soon that I'm not going to show in this video. It's going to be a little bit of a surprise, but man, is it going to be an awesome light. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more content. Leave me a comment down below of other lights you'd like to see me review or if there's any lights that you would like to see compared. Thanks for watching and have a great week.